Hello, this is Dr. Hossein, and welcome back to our full tutorial, which will be the submerged construction of an excavation. This figure one here shows um, what we are going to model within Plaxis. Uh, the geometry is going to be symmetrical, meaning that we are only going to model halfway of the geometry. So we are going to look at the left side of this model, so halfway of it. I'm going to look at the left side. But you can model the whole model if you like to, but you're going to look at the symmetry of it. Um, during excavation, uh, the whole of this clay layer is going to be excavated, so we're going to excavate to the surface of the sun. But uh, in the real world, the way you excavate, you excavate it in layers. So we are not going to excavate the whole of this 20 mil, uh, 20 meter of clay in one go. We are going to uh, excavate it in layers. So we are going to do three separate excavation stages. So we're going to divide this into another two additional layers of clay. And also during the model, we are going to add an interface between the diaphragm wall, uh, an interface on the diaphragm wall, which represents the interface between the soil and our structure. And this will reduce the wall friction as compared to the friction in the soil. Now, uh, our model is, we are going to put our groundwater level, um, we are going to assume this model to be dry, that that is no water. But if you take, uh, let's take into consideration that that is water into this model. Uh, the way the water will flow in during the excavation is just look at this picture here at the top of the screen. This shows you a flow net of um, the water, uh, how the water is flowing below our diaphragm wall. So this diaphragm wall here is impervious, meaning that water cannot flow through it. And as you see, this uh, little curve here, kind of line, is our flow net. It's our flow line. So this is the direction of our flow. And the water flow is depending on the level of water at the side of the dam. So if this was saturated, then water will be flowing below our diaphragm wall will not flow through the diaphragm wall. So with this, you can calculate your excess pore pressure at the uh, bottom of of your diaphragm wall, which should be expected to be um, high at this area as uh, water tends to flow faster below the pile. So just give you an idea of, of your model. So if you model it uh, not um, dry, saturated, then bear in mind that as you are calculating your pore water pressure, you know that you're expecting it to be high at the bottom of your diaphragm. This is the table one shows the material properties we're going to input for our clay and our sand. A diaphragm wall is going to be modeled using a plate. And these are the material we're going to use elastic. Bear in mind that you would have, have some of these properties that you've obtained in the laboratory. So let's just assume that this has been assumed and this is what we're going to use for the our diaphragm wall. Mm -hmm. Our strut is going to be a uh, model in plastic using an anchor. And this is uh, these are the properties. Bear in mind that elastic here, that is a mistake, it's going to be an elastoplastic, but this is going to be shown to you uh, while, while we are inputting the value within plastics. A small background into retaining walls. There are various types of retaining wall, um, but we are not going to go through all of them. I'm just going to mention briefly about some of them anchor, sheet pile, and cantilever sheet pile wall. The anchor um, sheet pile wall. Uh, can be given by back or anchor near the top of the wall. So, like you can see here, this tie rod. And it's used, mostly used in deep excavation and water front construction. The cantilever uh, sheet pie wall uh, is used for small retaining height, uh, usually 20 usually twenty feet, uh, possibly 20 feet to 6 meters above dredge line. Uh, if we use a permanent cantilever uh, sheet pile wall, it's for many for sand and gravel. If you're using a sand and gravel, it's going to be permanent. For the other uh, soil, it's going to be a temporary cantilever pile wall. The stability of cantilever sheet pile wall is due to the passive resistance developed below the lower surface. So these are the two differences between these two pile, two retaining walls. Sorry. There's also one cross sheet pile wall, uh, which is another type of retaining wall, which is used for large and small waterfront, used for beach erosion protection, stabilizing ground slopes, shoring walls of trenches, and other excavation for cofferdams. 
Um, one other thing as well is um, reinforcement uh, of our soul, like it, to strengthen our soul, and can do that using a reinforced earth. And there are two types: biasol or asium. Um, to make it more straightforward and simple, within Plasios, um, Plasio offers you a way of modeling a reinforced earth, which is called geogrid. So within Plasios, you can model. Um, if you want to add any kind of um, reinforcement, uh, you can use a drill grid, which can be shown here as the yellow line. And the blue line here is just the anchor. Like this example we are going to use, we are using a shock to support our wall during our excavation. This model example here use anchor. So there are different ways in which you can do your uh, retaining walls, as we mentioned, but different examples. So this yellow line here shows your drill grid. And it explain here, uh, the reinforcement is a construction material comprising soil that has been that has been shortened by tensile elements such as metal rod or strips. So this is kind of a, a strengthened material for the soil. Now, brace cut as well is well also in use, and these stages uh, can be observed as different stages of construction. So when we do our model in Plaxis during our calculation phase, we will go through how we are going to model our retaining wall at different stages of construction. So this is what this here represents at different stages of how this anchor will be installed as uh, as we excavate our soil. So the deeper you go there, the, deep, the deeper you go, you will increase the number of anchors you are uh, on your uh, wall. This is just to hold the wall if not the soil will fall into the excavation area this here shows one type of failure mechanism of a retaining wall being built on a weak soil this is just one type of failure the red line here shows a possible failure surface now we're going to go into plexus and um, do our model